Hello everyone, so I am going to be showing you today how I created this signature. Um, I am going to be using PowerPoint today, but you can totally use Google Slides, Google Draw. Um, it's totally up to you. Just know that if um, I am using PowerPoint, I do have a little bit more customization options as far as font goes and drop shadows, um, so on and so forth. So I do um, prefer using PowerPoint, but you can try to do something similar using Google Slides or Google Draw. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to File, Page Setup, and set your canvas to be six by three. So six inches wide and three inches tall. Um, and you'll, you may need to click on Custom in order to create that size. And so I deleted all the text boxes that normally come on it, and then I started from scratch. So I'm gonna show you how I did this. So you're gonna go to New Slide. Um, you may already have a blank one starting off, which is totally cool. So I'm gonna go to Insert Text Box, and I'm gonna click and drag. And I'm going to be using the font KA Charmed for my first and last name. A website that I like to use that shows me all of my fonts on my computer is called wordmark.it and you can type in a word or a phrase and it will show you what that word or phrase looks like with all of the fonts installed on your computer. So I typed in my name and if there is um, a little warning or box down here that says um, it wants to use Adobe Flash, make sure you click on that so that way it will know, it can gather all of the fonts that you've installed. So then you click enter and now you can see it's showing all of my fonts. So these are my AG Amy Grosebeck fonts that I've purchased off of Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, and I, I have so many fonts, it's quite ridiculous. But you can actually click on a few. So let's say you're clicking on ones that you think look nice. Then you can click Filter Selected and it will change it to those five. So now you can really focus in on which one do I like the best. And you can increase the font size or decrease it. I like to de decrease it so I can kind of see quickly um, more fonts at once rather than having to scroll through more and more pages because of how many fonts I have. So I am going to be using the font KA Charmed and I'm going to size it to 96. And I just type my name and I'm going to bold it. And now here comes the fun part with changing the color. So I will link the hex codes or I'll put in a screenshot really quickly of the colors specifically that I use to get this rainbow gradient effect. But then I'll also show you how to do it yourselves because you may want to change up some of the colors that I used. So if you wanted to use the specific colors that I provided, you're just going to highlight the letter and click on the drop down, more colors, and then you have all these different options up here. Make sure you are on the sliders, and then you'll type in the hex color number right here, then click OK. So to create the effect yourself, you're going to want to highlight your text, and then I like to start off in more of an orangish reddish color. I don't like it to be completely red, but that's just my personal choice. So then I'm gonna change it all to that color. Then I'm going to highlight all the letters after it and just keep moving along this color wheel, kind of around the circle following the Roy G. Biv pattern. Oh, that was highlight and just keep going along. Oops, I didn't select all those last time. That's okay. More colors. What? I guess they weren't, oh, okay, now we go. More colors, and then just keep moving along. And you can get as creative with this as you like, or you can just um, it's just fun to play around with the different colors and experiment and you can even do an ombre effect of just one color totally up to you and your style see and I feel like that was a little bit too bright so I'm gonna go back 
and I'm going to change it to the color it was before, which was this green. I'm going to readjust, so I'm going to move a little bit more this way. There we go. And then just keep tweaking and moving along. And the reason why I like to change all of them is so that way you kind of um, pick up where you left off and it's easier to gauge um, what shade should be next. So just keep highlighting and moving. This may be a little bit tedious for you, but this is actually really relaxing for me. Slowly but surely making our way around the wheel. Long name problems, all right, two more. Here we go, last one. All right, there we go. So now I have it how I would like. Can we just take a moment and appreciate how beautiful this is? All right, so now I need to add this drop shadow that you see kind of behind it as well as this white outline. So how I do that is I select the text box, then I'm going to go to Shape Format, Format Pane, then I'm going to go to Text Options. Make sure you're on Text Options and not Shape Options. And then you'll see all these different drop downs. So I'm going to start with the glow, and I'm just going to click on this very first one, give it the color white, adjust the size to two and then I'm going to turn the transparency off because I want it to be completely solid white and not see through at all. So you kind of can't really tell right now that there is a outline but you will once you add the shadow. So now I'm going to click on this first drop shadow and then I'm going to reduce the transparency some. I don't really mess with the size I like the blur to be about two or three, and then the distance I like to be about two. I may reduce the transparency just a little bit more. There we go, that looks good. All right, and then I am going to add um, my little description. So it could say, you know, fifth grade science teacher or principal or instructional coach, whatever it is. I like to put my title, the content that I teach, and then the school that I teach at. So I'm just going to copy and paste this onto this one so that way you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, and this is using the font Century Gothic and I sized it to 20. I'm gonna try to line it up to where it's um, even with where that A starts. So I may have to use my arrow keys to shift it over a little bit. And then to get this little symbol, it's not the forward slash that's on the same key as the question mark, but it's the backward slash kind of looks like a capital I almost. So I hold down shift, so that's what the backward slash looks like. But on that same key, if I hold down shift and press it, it kind of gives me that line that acts as a separator. So then once I have that how I like it, um, I then wanna add a cute little clip art. So again, the clip art I'm using comes from the KA collection. I'll try to link her or put a screenshot of her Teachers Bay Teachers store um, really quickly right here so that way you can see where I buy her fonts. And um, PB, a perfectly blend, she also has some doodle fonts that are school related. So I'll try to add a screenshot of her store as well. So what you'll need to do is go to insert text box. And then the font that I'm using is KA You Gon Learn. So this is called a doodle font. And what this looks like is whatever letter you type, it's actually a doodle. So instead of an A, it looks like it's like a laptop. Instead of an S, it's a telescope. Or a telescope, <laughs> it's a microscope. Um, instead of a D, it's an alarm clock, so on and so forth. I liked F, which was an apple. And then I'm actually gonna give the shape a drop shadow as well. So I'm gonna click on drop shadow, reduce the blur, um, the, the distance, because I want it to be a little bit closer to the shape. Um, maybe make it a little bit of a darker shadow. Maybe I'll keep the blur. And then I 
want it bigger than 96 so you can actually type in a font size that's bigger so I could type in 140 and that's a pretty big apple <laughs> bigger the better so now I'm gonna turn it and just kind of give it a little bit of a twist and then yeah I think that's good I like it um, so now what you're gonna want to do is I have some things that I want to link in my signature but obviously this is an image and I'm going to save it as an image and you can't link specific things within an image, at least as a signature. So I have a workaround and what I do is I'm going to first export my slide. So when I go to file format, I'm going to click on PNG and it's okay that it has a white background um, because your emails that you send have a white background anyways. So I'm going to click save and the reason the reason why I'm saving it as a PNG instead of a JPEG, PNG has a little bit of a higher quality to it. So normally you would save images as a PNG if they had a transparent background, um, but it's okay that this one is not going to be. I still wanna save it as a PNG type because the color and just the format is gonna be more crisp. So I'm gonna click PNG, current slide. If you save every slide, it'll save all of them that are in your presentation. And then I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and I'm going to name it Ashley's Signature. Then click Export. Now it's saved to my desktop and I'm gonna double click on it and it's gonna open in preview. Um, if you are not using a Mac, you can find softwares online that can crop your signatures. Um, so what I like to do is I just drag a rectangle. So I'm trying to get rid of this extra white around it. And you want to try to get it as close as possible, but you don't want to cut off any of your shadow either. So that looks about good. And then once you have it selected, you can go to Tools and then Crop, or you can um, press Command K on your keyboard as a shortcut. And so now it is cropped to the size I would like. And so now I'm going to show you how you can add it as a signature to Outlook or Gmail. So I'm using the Outlook app on my computer, but I will show you how to do it on um, Outlook on the website on using Google Chrome. So if you have the app on your computer, you're going to want to click on your Outlook name and then click Preferences. And then you're gonna to want to click on Signatures, then click Add. If there's already something there, you'll want to delete it and then name this signature. So I'm going to name this Rainbow Gradient Custom. Then I'm going to go to Add Pictures, Picture from File. There's the signature I just created. I'm going to click Insert. I'm going to size it down just a little bit. And now I want to add, so I'm gonna click enter so I have a line down here. I want to add um, a couple of links that can redirect parents or staff members to certain things that um, they, may need, they may need access to. So I'm going to type fourth grade website, click here, Amazon wish list, click here. And so now I'm going to change the font to Century Gothic so it matches this font that I used up here. I'm going to bold it, maybe make it a little bit bigger. And then I'm going to kind of center it underneath my signature just so it kind of looks a little bit more uniformed. All right, now this is where you can add your links. So let's say, Obviously, my Instagram page is not our website, but let's say that is the website that I'm wanting to link it to. I'm going to copy the URL up there, and then I'm going to click link, paste in the address, click OK, and then there is now your signature. So then you'll want to click save um, after you have it how you would like it, close out of it, then make sure right here where it says new messages and replies and forward you want to um, make sure you pick the signature that you created right here. Um, obviously for replies and forwards, if you don't want a signature, you can click none. I just like to have it on everything that I send. So now I'm gonna close out of it and then I'm gonna click new email to test it. And there it is. So now I'm gonna show you how you would do this if you were using Outlook on your internet browser. So you're gonna wanna go to settings and then options. Then you'll scroll down and underneath layout, you'll see email signature.
Then you have this image option right here and you'll want to click on the image, find the signature that you want to use. And when I inserted it, the image is massive and it doesn't look like there's a way to resize it on here. So I'm just gonna delete that image. Try to. Ah. So I'm just gonna click discard and start over. All right, here we go. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna find that image that I created. I'm gonna duplicate it so that way I don't mess up the original. And on the copy, I'm gonna go to tools, adjust size, and then let's do like an inch. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so now let's try. Let me go here, image, click on the copy. There we go. All right, and then same thing, you would just add text down here and you can add hyperlinks right here, um, just like I showed you in the first one. So then click save and then you can automatically include it on new messages or ones that you forward or reply to. Once you hit save, um, let me click here first, save and let's see what it looks like. I honestly don't use um, Outlook this way, I just use it as the desktop application, but it works all the same, so there's the signature. Alrighty, and lastly for Gmail, what you'll want to do is you're gonna click on Settings, and then click on Settings again, and then under General, you're gonna scroll down and just keep scrolling, till you see signature right here. So then you're gonna click create new. I'm gonna name this rainbow custom. Click create. All right, now I'm going to insert an image, upload. I'm gonna select a file from my device. Let's try uploading the original and see if it lets you resize it on Gmail. So if you click on the image, you can click small, medium, or large. Let's leave it at large and see what happens. Um, same thing, you can add fonts below it or text below it. It just doesn't look like you can add um, the your custom font. So you could totally do one of these that are very clean and say fourth grade website. Click here and then bold it, and then use the space bar to move it over, and then you would add the link like we did with Outlook, paste it in, click OK. So now let's see for new emails, use Rainbow Custom, um, insert signature before quoted text and replies, sure. Okay, now I'm gonna click Save Changes. Now let's compose to see what it looks like. Beautiful, oh, makes my heart so happy, love it. I hope that video was super helpful for y'all and I hope you have so much fun designing your new email signature. Bye y'all.